Welcome to Health Diary. My name is Winnie Lubembe and we're coming to you from Four Points by Sheraton right here in Harlingham. Now, eye movement is controlled by six muscles in each eye that allows you to look up, look down or from side to side without necessarily having to move your head. But if there is an imbalance when it comes to the movement, then maybe you can have a condition called strabismus or squint. So what exactly is it and what causes the same? The treatment well, all that is coming up after this fact of the matter. A squint or strabismus is a condition in which the eyes do not align properly. It usually occurs when the muscles that control the movement of the eye and the eyelid are not working together, resulting to both eyes unable to look at the same spot at the same time. It is estimated to affect around 2.5% of the general population. Well, let's get to understand more about squint. And of course, to help us with that conversation, we have Dr. Motaza Somji, who is an optometrist. So good to see you, Dr. How are you doing today? Perfectly You're all well. right. The atmosphere is good yes. the place is good yes. and you people are fantastic thank you everything is okay i Super. love that all right and of course we also have salim osman who's here to share his journey as well salim thank you so much for for agreeing to come and speak with us today um and Dr. let's just start with first things first all the right. eye movement because i think majority of the times we honestly just don't understand how the eye moves <laughs> what causes it Absolutely. what holds it uh, together so can we just start from there yeah uh yes what cannot be seen cannot be really be appreciated so sure. the eye when we look at it it keeps on moving up down right left but we don't know how it moves right. let me tell you something good mm -hmm. each eye each eye is handled by six muscles right. and those six muscles make sure that we are able to look in the right way mm -hmm. focus correctly mm -hmm. if we suddenly have to read or up close mm -hmm. the muscles are in motion mm -hmm to look for the muscles are in motion and these are the things which keep us going mm -hmm. in our daily mm -hmm. life absolutely so then when we talk about squint um then where does that you know come from um given the muscles and what controls the eye movement all right so for some reasons which i will enumerate later mm -hmm. uh, one of the muscles or two of the muscles don't really work well and when these don't work well, our eye, one of the eye will go inwards, which is known as esophoria. All right. Or it will go outwards, walled eye, mm -hmm. to become exophoria. Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. For example, a person is looking straight, you suddenly realize one of the eye has gone up. Mm -hmm. And that is known as hyperphoria or mm -hmm. hypertropia. Okay. Going down, one of the eye is known as hypotropia. Mm -hmm. So these are mainly the four conditions which are associated with our muscles. Mr. Osman, let's start with you. Um, 49 years, right? It dates all the way back to childhood. Um, so you were born like this, right? Um, with a condition. But there's something that you said before we came on air, and that is you had so much support from your family that you didn't even realize that, hey, there's something different. Tell us about your childhood and growing up. I just grew up the same as I am today, yeah. And my, uh, my family, friends, my community, you see, at that time, the uh, generation was different from now. Right now, the generation is different. Our time, you see, everyone was close to each other. There was no any uh, discrimination at that time. Because you see, we say inab uh, disability is not inability. I started wearing my glasses mm -hmm. when I was around uh, 18 years. 18 years. Yes. And Dr. do you want to help us understand that? Because when you for the time soon, when we read, you see, yeah, there's a little bit of pain here and there. When you try to align your eyes, naturally the muscle has to go into overdrive. Okay. And because of the overdrive, it goes into some stress or some strain and you experience headaches and all that. Mm -hmm. So that is very common that when you wear glasses and the eye is forced to focus, mm -hmm. 
then you start getting things like pain or discomfort and all those. All right. The biggest question that one might have is then what exactly causes uh, squint? Because we talked about like the different aspects and categorization yes. of the same, but what exactly causes it? So either you are born with it, okay, okay congenital, mm. or as you grow, if you get an injury or an illness, mm -hmm. those are the factors which will come into play and suddenly the one of the eye will drift mm -hmm. or will converge. You can also come up with uh, uh, disease like measles or meningitis, mm. which will kickstart the process. Mm. And uh, to bring back that vision into adulthood, uh, to correct it, is a little difficult. Mm. It's very quite easy, not very easy, quite easy with mm. children up till the age of six or seven. Mm. Including up till some, some doctors and some of us, we say up till the age of nine, we can correct it. And there are machines for it. That is uh, what helps the patient to bring back uh, the muscular uh, ability. Mm -hmm. All right. So then how common is it? How common is, is squint? Yes, good question. It's 2.6% uh, precisely of the population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, you will see many young children having a slight squint. Mm -hmm. But as they grow and uh, their muscles become more formidable and strong, the eye automatically focuses right. but the parents have to be very vigilant if the eye is not focusing mm -hmm. then a visit to an optometrist is due mm -hmm. and it is important that these tests are done when the child comes mm -hmm. uh, it is also important on which op optometrist or ophthalmologist yeah, you go to very very important yeah, because okay. normally many of uh, us we just do vision mm -hmm. if the child can see Hallelujah, we are good. Yeah. But we don't look at the muscle imbalance mm -hmm. or we don't look at the misalignment of the eye. Mm -hmm. And that is where the problems come as the child grows. Mm -hmm. What are some of these other you know, symptoms that we need to be on the lookout for? So you will straight away see it is uh, the, the one of the eye is drifting mm -hmm. or converging. Uh, but Osman, so first 18 years of your life everything was okay you didn't have any major issues until like you said at some point you started developing problems that is when you started wearing glasses so what exactly happened um, at this time before you started wearing glasses i went to the optician mm -hmm. so he checked my eyes and he said that uh, the vision is a bit low all right yeah. okay that is when i got my, uh, my glasses your glasses yeah. so were you in did you experience pain maybe in the eye yeah mm -hmm. uh, i started experiencing headache mm -hmm. okay all right doctor is this something common that you experience um yes. especially yeah. during diagnosis so when one of the ib is suppressed mm -hmm. it starts becoming lazy mm -hmm. lazy eye medical term is known as amblyopia all right what happens is that if my right eye is doing well and the left is drifting then the brain has got the power to take synapses and messages only from the right side of the right, right eye. Okay. The left eye, the brain will ignore. Mm. And therefore, because of inactivity within the system mm. inside, mm -hmm. the eye will retreat, right. if I may. Okay. And if it retreats, then it is quite difficult to bring it back to, mm. to normalcy. Mm. That is why early detection mm -hmm. is so, so important. Okay. Most of the time, it is one eye only. One eye. One eye only. Most of the time. All right. But it can be alternating. Okay. So one will focus, the other will drift. Mm -hmm. Then if you close this eye, mm -hmm. this will focus, that one will drift. Yeah. So that is not. So one of the muscle, the temporal rectus muscle, basically is in trouble. Mm -hmm. This muscle over here. All right. And, and if this muscle is in trouble, it will keep on pulling the eye on to, that to side. That side. Okay. All right? mm -hmm. If the nasal muscle is, in is, is not working well, it's not mm -hmm. getting the right signal from the brain, then the eye will go towards. inwards. Yeah. You have isotropia. Mm -hmm. So that needs, definitely needs to be corrected. Because in later years, when a ch child becomes an adult, mm -hmm. binocular vision you will not have. And if you don't have binocular vision, you will not have a 3D effect of the vision. Mm -hmm. Mr. Osman mentioned so vision was his major um, you know issue he would not see he would not see far but aside from that what's some of the impact very quickly before we go on a break uh, you know as far as Quint is concerned. The impact uh, in his particular case is very unique mm -hmm. because he's, he was supported mm -hmm. okay uh, however the impact is in class there will be a lot of teasing there will be a lot of bullying mm -hmm. um, 
if it is any gender, the other gender will not look at that person. Now, if that person has attained puberty, he starts feeling, oh, this yeah. girl is not looking at me or this yeah. other, other gender is not. So it really creates a psychological effect, number one. Number two, unfortunately, even the teachers don't look at uh, such a child with uh, much uh, favor. Uh, they say this guy mm. will not be doing anything much. Mm. So it becomes an issue. Uh, so there is peer pressure, there is administrative pressure. Plus the child himself or herself will notice that I cannot really concentrate well because there is no binocular vision. And because of that, not be able to memorize or to grasp the lesson well. Mm -hmm. And that keeps the child lesser mm -hmm. academically. Mm -hmm. These are main challenges. Which So, mm -hmm. bottom line, mm -hmm. early detection, early correction, mm -hmm. job done. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break. But of course, when we come back, we'll also get to hear from Osman. How did things change, you know, when he was introduced yes. to glasses? But of course, uh, Dr. Ari will also talk about then the diagnosis and the treatment um, you know, aspect. Because like I said, diagno early diagnosis, early detection is, is very important. So of course, all that is coming up after the break. Stay with us. This is Health Diary. Almost 250,000 people die on the road in Africa each year. Follow these safe steps and help save lives. Drivers and passengers must always wear a seatbelt. Ensure children are safely fastened and keep small children out of the front seat. So when you're on the roads, follow these safe steps and help save lives. We all have a role to play in road safety. Together, let's make Africa's road safer. Just tell me already, I'm dying of anguish here. Eva is already dead. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Look, Marcelo, you're stressing over everything that's been happening since Marisa came back to your life. Your daughter's activities, the crash and her performance at school. You're anguished and I understand. You have absolutely no idea how much I want you to trust me just a little more. It had to be you. Phase 5 is now selling and as we promised, we have already done roads, water. Call this number 0790-300-300. First today with Optivem and become a philanthropist. Okay, welcome back. And of course, the show is Health Diary, and today it's all about a squint. And I'm pretty sure you're learning so much from the conversation, especially if you tune in during the first part of the conversation. But if not, we have Dr. Murtaza Somji, who is an optometrist, helping us with the conversation, as well as Mr. Salim Osman, who's here to share, to share his journey and his experience um, as well. And Salim, I'm just going to start with you. So after you were given your glasses, right, when you went to the doctor, optometrist <laughs> mm -hmm. what are some of these tests that uh, they did what what were you told to do so that they see what exactly is uh, is the problem they told me that uh, your uh, vision is a bit low and uh, you need glasses but, but they didn't even tell me that you have to, you have got this problem okay oh they didn't tell you at that time yeah okay and you have a school problem or any uh, mm -hmm. They just told you your vision is low. Yeah. We're going to give you. Yes. We're going to give you glasses. Okay. Um. How much of a difference did the glasses make once you put on your glasses? Um. What was it like? Did you experience any any change compared to when you were not wearing glasses? Yeah. Once I put my glasses. Yeah. I can see clearly. Okay. Yeah. So you can see far. Yeah. You said earlier on seeing far was far a bit. Far and near. Far and near, you can see very well. What about reading? Yeah. 
reading perfect as well. I like that. All right. So, Dr. Chai, <laughs> what exactly happens then during a, a diagnosis, um, you know, of, of for squint? So, after we do the diagnosis, there are about three or four different options we are presented with. Okay. And uh, normally we start with uh, making the weaker eye more powerful. Right. How do we do that? Uh, we prescribe, first of all, the most important part is correct glasses. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say correct glasses, we give exact power for the distance and reading mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And we correct the visual equity. Having corrected the visual equity, on the same lenses we introduce a prism, mm -hmm. same lenses. Mm -hmm. The prism now slowly and methodically takes the eye inwards. If mm -hmm. suppose the eye is exophoric, right. it's out, mm -hmm. walled eye, then it slowly and uh, very correctly takes it mm -hmm. to that level. You won't even feel it? You won't even feel it, okay. apart from if it is... Uh, if the prism is high, then it will be quick, so then you will feel. So, okay. the optometrist has to be spot on mm. in what he is doing. Yeah. I would rather give a lesser prism mm -hmm. than uh, a, an over prism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. It takes a little, little time, mm -hmm. it is a little expensive for the patient, but the ultimate, you can get back your binocular. Mm. Okay? Okay. That is the most important. Seriopsis is the most important part. Mm -hmm. Um, you see, when you are coming down the stairs, for example, without you knowing, but there is something at the peripheral which is working. Mm -hmm. You are coming down straight, but on the side so there is can, peripheral, that's see, known as yes. coarse stereopsis. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, coarse stereopsis is at its element because you are coming down the stairs quickly, but you are aware that there is some boundaries here, and if I don't treat properly, I'll follow. Then there is also something known as fine stereosis. Mm -hmm. And that is, suppose you are threading a needle. Now that is total central focus. Mm -hmm. So that stereopsis, both eyes have to be working. Right. Otherwise, you go like you that. Yeah. yeah, you'll see many people sometimes, mm -hmm. they will go like that. What, what happened? This eye is not it's, working. It's not working, yes. Uh -huh. So <laughs> they'll thread a needle nevertheless, but yeah. it will be at a different, the, the head will turn. Yeah. And that uh, is not really the right way of doing things because the 3D vision is lost. Mm -hmm. And our whole life works around. You'll be surprised. Tell me, I've got two eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? I close one, I see you well. I, I open both, I see you, you see? well. <laughs> I see you one only. How yeah. does that happen? Yeah. yeah. I should be seeing you as two. two. Yeah. But imagine the fusion which happens. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. In between the head here somewhere, there is something known as optic chiasma. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Two, I see two of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it goes up here, the they are fused. fused now, if yeah. the fusion is not right, if the one eye is not working properly, mm -hmm. you will see, I will see you and then there will be another you there a little yeah. bit fainter, yeah, yeah. but there will be another one oh. until the fusion completely takes over. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Mm -hmm. Through the correct glasses. Okay. okay? Uh -huh. So, that is part one. Okay. Then there are some visual therapeutical exercises which we need to tell the patients to do. Right. It takes about five, seven minutes a day. Mm -hmm. But if the parents are uh, in sync and they want their child to develop good vision, mm -hmm. then they will uh, encourage that and they will teach the child to do it. Mm -hmm. So visual therapeutical exercises are most important and they have to be done literally every day. Mm -hmm. What happens in that? Mm -hmm. The child focuses quickly, it tracks quickly, mm -hmm. And it is on the ball, it can spot, you can know the speed at which the child is going. Okay. So the neurons are responding majestically well to the child's demand. Mm -hmm. And that uh, makes the brain powerful mm -hmm. and the vision becomes powerful also. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, if you, you want to talk about the exercise? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there used to be a machine which is now not much used. There used to be a machine known as Synaptophore. Mm -hmm. And in Synaptophore, uh, there is a, a horse here mm -hmm. and there is a man here like this. Okay. Okay, and then you put your chin forward. Mm -hmm. Both the eyes are watching. Now, the, when, uh, if, if you have got a drift, ex exophoria, mm -hmm. this is like this one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now you don't know what's happening really. There's a ho I have to look at the horse or I have to look at the man. Mm -hmm. But then there are two knobs here. 
we have to keep on turning the knobs until slowly, 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 this man together. comes on the horse. The horse. Okay. Then you have to take it behind. What are we doing? We are training this muscle mm -hmm. to become more stronger and keep on focusing inwards. Okay. Or the other exercise is to take it outwards okay. until that man sits on the horse. On the horse. Okay. Yeah, and, and it, it is a 45 minute exercise, exercise. every day. Oh, wow. It used to be. Okay. Now, well, I don't, in Kenya, I have not seen a machine like this. <laughs> when I used okay. to study, it was there. Yeah. And all so right. on and so forth. Then there are surgicals and all that, which I will probably yeah, explain. We'll I, I also yes. want to talk about patching. Absolutely. We'll yes. talk about that then, the yeah. different treatment options, um, you know, for the same. Um, but for Osman, very quickly, I just want, because Dr. Terry mentioned, uh, you know, something to do with double vision. Um, did you experience that? Like when you remove your, your glasses, um, did you experience double vision? Yeah. When you don't have your glasses, you experience you experience the same. So of course, all that changed once you have had your glasses your glasses yeah. on. So <coughs> then, um, the question might be so, and especially when it comes to reading and those exercises that uh, Dr. Terry has mentioned, do you sometimes like do some of these exercises just to strengthen your muscles for the eye? Yes. Okay. What are some of these things that you do that you can help the people? For the eyes, I just uh, walk in and. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, all right. But um, aside from that one, right, just to make sure that your eyes and your glasses are all performing well. So do you go for like checkups every every frequently? Yeah. When do you go? I go for checkup. How often? After? Once in a year. Once in a year you go for you go for a checkup. All right. My doctor is here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ah, Nectari, so <laughs> once a year. But but does it is that standard or did you have to reduce the interval of him coming to, to see you for checkup? So uh, every year is a must. Okay. And because his vision is reasonably good mm -hmm. and the eyes sometimes focus and sometimes don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have left it at that only okay. because okay. if we overdo it, mm -hmm. he'll start getting other issues like headaches and mm -hmm. too much pain. Yeah. He's comfortable with the condition, mm -hmm. so we are good with that too. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so it, it's working well. Mm -hmm. It's working well. Do we have instances where one might need surgery? Yes. So I, yeah, I'll come to surgery. But okay. uh, before that, we mm -hmm. put this is a patch. We okay. we put patch on the glasses. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, and once we put that, the good eye is covered. Okay. The good eye. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the the weaker eye needs to focus. Mm -hmm. So once you cover the good eye, mm -hmm. this one has to fixate. Yes. I have to be looking at that camera there mm -hmm. or the light there, mm -hmm. and as much as I'm looking, I'm fixating. The mm -hmm. more I fixate, the more my visual apparatus mm -hmm. is working well okay okay uh -huh. and that really helps one of the interventions if suppose you have got a uh, nerve palsy mm -hmm. paralysis mm -hmm. and one eye is forever there mm -hmm. completely it is not now turning in okay. okay or the patient is not very comfortable mm -hmm. or most of the time the eye is out and it can come in with even without paralysis mm -hmm. Many people say that we want some sort of medical intervention mm -hmm. and in that there is a surgery which has to be done okay. and the surgery is the patient is looking on the opposite side and you cut the sclera the white part mm -hmm. okay and you detach the muscle oh. and cut the muscle and reattach it okay all right mm -hmm. now you have made the muscle short mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. or you can make it longer so, so it muscle. allows so suppose if the, the eye is going in, you make the muscle short, it pulls here. Mm. If it is going out, you release the muscle, it comes in here. Okay. Yeah, it is very, very delicate. So Osman, what would you say, and especially to people watching us, because like you said, you had so much support uh, from your family and from your friends, which is a good thing. So what would you say to parents or, you know, guardians or, you know, the entire community who's watching us today My as far as support? To the society right mm. now. Mm is if the child has the problem mm -hmm. they should do it immediately mm -hmm. because in the future he can get psychologically affected that's true that's true all right so then as we bring this to a close um the cost aspect is usually a very big question for so many people um so what would you say that looks like and what would be your call to action so it's very simple in this particular manner the cost effect effect is zero literally mm -hmm. 
-hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Because change of glasses, what would be lenses, you don't have to change the frame all the time. Mm -hmm. So change of lens, increase the prism, mm -hmm. what would it cost? Maybe 2,000, 3,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And that also maybe, maybe six months. Mm -hmm. And then as the, as the child grows every one year. Okay. Or every two years for that matter. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's literally mm -hmm. peanuts. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you go for surgery, it will cost approximately about two thousand to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, yeah. so but then there are uh, interventions by NHIF or other medical insurance, uh, companies, insurance yeah. facilities mm -hmm. which will cover basically mm -hmm. because it's a, it's an in 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 inpatient. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look at it and if you are uh, intent of changing the life of your child. Mm -hmm then it is very easy. Yeah. Uh, five minutes to seven minutes pencil push-up mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. or visual exercise at home. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, there's something known as Brox beads. Mm -hmm. That is another exercise mm -hmm. which you can take. Mm -hmm. And it's just basically a home-based exercise which doesn't so cost. Do. And it is five minutes. Yeah. So it's literally nothing. What? The best we can do is to suggest and prescribe that this is the exercise you do mm -hmm. come and see us again after three months right. we will evaluate mm -hmm. and that is and the best we can do yeah. but it all depends on the, the people person. living together yeah. as mr salim said oh, yes. that the support of the parents kind of and the society is the Absolutely anchor in all important. that story. we do not want to stigmatize anyone let's Absolutely. embrace one another it doesn't matter where we are at. True. thank you very much dr murtaza somji optometrist as well as salim osman um you know thank you very much for both of you for coming by today and of course helping us understand more about a squint and time now for you to take a look at this health tip A tip on boosting good mental health is to surround yourself with good people. Having a support system of family and friends who are good people and give you good advice is very important. That helps you feel good about yourself and make sure that you are living your best life. So see the people in your life that support you and make you feel good as often as you can, whether it's family or friends or just people who are close to you. Well, that marks the end of our conversation today right here on Health Diary, all about squint. And of course, the takeaway message is instead of stigma, how about we practice support? It doesn't matter who we are, the condition that we have, support is of utmost importance. So uh, if you have any other question, well, our social media handles are down at the bottom of your screen. Let's engage and get more understanding as far as squint is concerned. But for now, it's goodbye. My name is Winnie Lubembe. A special thanks to Four Points by Sheraton for hosting us. Until next time. Adios.